Hi there everyone. Today's video is a continuation of a series of videos where I use engineering analysis based on underlying physical principles to provide some information and some guidance to help you choose the best components for your next FPV quad build. Now, so far I've looked at motors and I've looked at props and I'll leave some links down in the video description in case you want to check those videos out. In my last video on props, a lot of pilots reached out to me in the comments section to ask what effect the weight of the quad has on prop selection and particularly prop diameter. And today we're going to be taking a look at that and seeing if we can answer the question, if I have a quad that weighs, let's say 250 grams, what size prop should I be putting on that quad? So let's get into it. So as I said in the introduction, Lots of pilots have asked me, you know, what size drone should I build? What prop diameter is right for me? And I always ask, what weight of drone are you looking to build? Because the primary driver of prop diameter is the target all up weight of the drone. Now, all up weight includes the battery and battery straps and GoPro if you're running a GoPro. And really, it's the mass of the drone if you were to weigh it immediately before you take off to fly. The key output is prop diameter. And that's because prop diameter controls the frame size, it controls the size of the motors, it controls the size of the battery that you're going to need. It's really a, a key parameter that ends up controlling the size of almost every component on a drone. And as I began to think about sizing a drone based on its all up weight, I started to consider what parameters we want to optimize. And after some research, I've come to the conclusion that prop tip speed or maximum prop tip speed actually is the key parameter that we want to maintain as drones get bigger or smaller. And to give you an example, a full size helicopter maintains a constant blade tip speed of approximately 450 miles an hour. Turboprop aircraft, despite having a much smaller propeller, also have an optimum blade tip speed of approximately 450 miles an hour at low altitude. So there's something going on there. So why do all these very different sized props maintain this approximately 450 mile an hour maximum tip speed? For a given prop, we can always achieve more performance, and by performance I mean aircraft speed and thrust, at higher tip speeds. And we can do that without too much loss of efficiency, it's, it's almost free, up to a certain point. Once we continue to increase tip speed beyond that point, we see that efficiency starts to fall off due to a phenomenon called compressibility losses. The graph on the right somewhat illustrates this. On the x-axis we have advance ratio, which is the inflow velocity, which is related to the forward speed of the quad, divided by the blade tip velocity. And what we can see is that for a constant advance ratio, if we have a higher blade tip velocity, we can operate at a higher speed. What we see on the y-axis is the prop efficiency. And if you look at the prop efficiency at an advance ratio of 0.6, it really doesn't change very much with RPM. So we increase the RPM, we get a higher top speed for the same efficiency, which is fantastic. That's effectively free performance just from having a few more RPMs. But you can't continue to get this free performance just by increasing the RPMs more and more because of a phenomenon called compressibility losses. Now, air is compressible. If you move an object through air fast enough, it will start to significantly compress the air in front of it. The effects of compressibility damage the efficiency of a propeller by increasing the drag on the blades and you can see that in this sort of very schematic image on the right hand side. As the blade is moving through the air so quickly, the air can't actually get out of the way of the blade fast enough. And you get this high pressure zone building up in front of the leading edge of the blade. Now eventually, once you reach the speed of sound, you'll actually form a shock wave um, in that zone. But even before you get there, you get significant compressibility effects above a Mach number of approximately 0.6. And what we find is that 450 miles an hour in air is 0.59 Mach. 
So all of these props are being run to have a tip speed that's just below the point where compressibility effects start to kick in and damage the efficiency. So if we know that we want to maintain this optimum maximum tip speed of 450 miles an hour, how does everything scale? Well, propeller torque scales with the cube of prop diameter if tip speed is kept constant. Propeller power, the mechanical power that the propeller needs to spin, scales with the square of diameter if tip speed is kept constant. The equation shows that mechanical torque T is equal to the torque constant of the propeller, which is to do with its shape, times the density of air, times the square of the tip speed, which as we said, we're going to keep constant, multiplied by the cube of the prop diameter. And mechanical power, which is torque times the angular velocity of the prop, is equal to 2 pi times the torque constant of the propeller, times the density of air, times the cube of the tip speed, which again we're keeping constant, times by the square of the diameter. So how does this scaling of torque affect our choice of motor? Now the torque required to maintain that optimum propeller tip speed increases as the cube of the diameter. And in my previous video, I stated that motor torque is proportional to the envelope volume of the stator. Therefore, motor stator envelope volume must also increase with the cube of diameter. And because the mass of the motor is roughly proportional to motor volume, that will also scale as the cube of the prop diameter. So how does the frame scale? The frame must remain suitably stiff and strong to support the components. Strength of a quadcopter arm scales with its cross-sectional area. The bending stiffness of the arm scales with the second moment of area. Bending moments on the frame scale with the length of the arm. And overall, taking all that into account, frame mass should approximately scale as the cube of the prop diameter. The scaling of the electronics is a little bit more tricky. Much of the electronics doesn't scale with prop diameter at all. The FPV camera, the flight controller, the VTX, the receiver, a GoPro if you're carrying one, these are all the same weight pretty much no matter how big you make the quad. However, the power electronics, the ESCs and the cables, should scale roughly with the electrical power required from the motors. So that's going to scale as the square of the prop diameter. Now the scaling of the battery is really important because a battery on an FPV drone makes up about a third of the weight. Motor power only increases as the square of prop diameter. And a battery's energy storage and a battery's ability to supply power scale with its volume and therefore mass because the density of these batteries don't really change. And therefore we should expect the battery weight to scale as the square of the prop diameter, particularly if you want to maintain similar flight times across different sized drones. Based on this overall analysis, I think that the battery scaling should really be the dominant scaling that we think about for quad performance. Although the frame and the motors scale with the cube of prop diameter, this is somewhat offset by the electronics weight, much of which doesn't increase anywhere near as quickly. And this allows a simple rule of thumb scaling for mini quads based on the square of prop diameter. And I propose to use disc loading, therefore, as the figure of merit for mini quad sizing. And disc loading is defined as the mass of the quad, the all up weight, divided by the total area of the props, which is pi times the diameter of the prop squared. So I've selected disc loading as the figure of merit, and I've produced this graph which shows you how prop diameter varies with quadcopter weight and I've put on it these lines of constant disc loading. So in general, the more up and to the left you go on this graph, the lower your disc loading and the better your quad is going to perform, up to a point. And I say up to a point because as we start going very far up and to the left on this graph, 
we run into a particular problem. And that problem is that quadcopters with very low disc loadings struggle to achieve the optimum tip speed of 450 miles an hour because they lack enough mass in the motor and in the battery to achieve those tip speeds. Given the current state of battery and motor technology, this green line of 6 grams per square inch looks to be pretty much optimum. I find that a lot of the highest performance race frames sit uh, on this green line, like the 533 switchback. And also a lot of really great long range quads like the Flywheel Explorer also managed to sit on this line. So I would say that in general, particularly if you're building a slightly larger quad, let's say a, a four inch or a five inch, this green line is really where you want to be aiming for. If you're looking at a freestyle quad that's going to have to carry a, an action camera like a GoPro session, typically those tend to lie on this blue line. And so there you'll get a little bit more fling. Um, you'll get that sort of typical freestyle quad performance that, that uh, people know and enjoy. However, if you start to add a heavier action camera, like some of the heavier GoPro heroes, like the GoPro Hero 9, for example, on a, on a five inch quad, you really start pushing down towards this yellow line. And I think that's bad news. And that's why I would suggest if you're going to run a heavier camera like a Hero 9, you start considering increasing your prop size to 5.5 inches, because that would bring you back up to this blue line where you're going to get that uh, that nice five inch freestyle quad feel that we we know and love, which is that sort of 600 grams for a five inch type level. If you're up at 750 grams because you're carrying a big heavy GoPro Hero 9, then if you go to a 5.5 inch prop, that might get you back to the sort of performance that you that you enjoyed with the 600 gram five inch. If we're looking down here at this very high disc loading, here we're really looking at Cinewhoops and other quads with pretty low power to weight ratio. And I would say that, you know, those quads have a place, but that place is not performance acrobatic flying. That's going to be cruising. And so the question that everyone is asking at the moment is, how do we make the best quad under 250 grams? And so I'm going to direct you to this graph. I'm going to go up the 250 gram vertical line. And what we find is that somewhere around a prop size of three and a half, maybe four inches is going to be looking pretty good for a very high performance 250 gram quad. If, however, you're looking for something that has a bit more fling and performs as close as possible to a sort of 600 gram five inch, then really you're looking at maybe like a 3.25 inch prop. Now I know this is potentially going to cause some controversy because a lot of people have been investing a lot of time and engineering effort in creating 250 gram quads with five inch props. Now those, not saying that those quads don't have a place. What I am saying is that by going to five inches, you have to really be confident that you're still going to be maintaining that 450 mile an hour tip speed. And most five inch 250 gram quads sacrifice enough in terms of motor volume and motor weight that they're no longer able to achieve that 450 mile an hour tip speed. And that means that they're going to be giving up some straight line speed and some performance. If you're looking really for the maximum possible performance, the maximum possible speed out of a 250 gram quad, this analysis suggests that maybe we should be looking at about, you know, between maybe three and four inches for a prop diameter. And certainly if you're looking for a quad that most closely resembles a 600 gram five inch freestyle quad, then perhaps a 3.25 inch prop is a good place to start. I hope you found this information useful. I'll post a link down in the video description to a Google Drive in case you want to look at these slides later.
I'm also hoping that this video generates a lot of positive discussion in the comment section. So if you have any thoughts, opinions or questions, please leave them down below and I will try to respond to as many of them as I can, as always. If you find this work valuable and you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon and I'll put a link for that down in the description as well. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.